the scene in Tijuana today. Earlier, hundreds in the caravan were peacefully protesting. That's when a small group broke off and rushed toward the fence. Americans are inundated with images of migrants storming the U.S. border. But for many of these Central Americans, this isn't their first time across. While Guatemala remains one of the most dangerous countries in the world. Today, Vice President Kamala Harris placed her first call to the president of Guatemala to discuss the need to work together. These are animals. In Latin America and the Caribbean, about 60% of Guatemalans live in poverty. With over 6,000 members nationwide, it is one of the largest street gangs in the country with a presence in 46 states and in the District of Columbia. He says he simply can't find Americans to pick tomatoes for $150 a day. They really didn't take anybody's job. Because the Americans aren't working in the fields, that I'm going to tell you. Tonight we take a ground level look at the effects of crime committed by illegal immigrants. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. My name is Ali Garcia. In 2009, I was given the opportunity to intern in the U.S. Capitol with Congressman Jim Cooper. Through this experience, I was given tools to help advocate for the immigrant population. In 2020, I worked at a nonprofit organization with Unidos U.S. to conduct research and write an article that debunks many immigrant stereotypes. Today, my partner Stephanie and I will be presenting research that helps provide background information on many misinterpretations that the media has placed on the immigrant population. My name is Stephanie Ortega. I was born in Monterey, Mexico. I am one of the nearly 700,000 DACA recipients. I'm a first-generation college student. In 2019, I was able to attend a Unidos U.S. conference that supports and advocates for the Hispanic community in immigration reform. Through this research, we hope to present a new perspective on the reality of the immigrant community. increase in deportations could have unintended economic consequences. Yeah. Paul DeMar used to ship 80 truckloads of tomatoes a day, now just 20. There are many misconceptions about immigrants. One includes that immigrants are taking American jobs. While one of the many reasons immigrants migrate to the United States is for economic opportunity, they do not take American jobs. In 2017, about 29 million immigrants were working or looking for work in the United States. The U.S. Department of Labor reports that foreign-born immigrants are typically more disposed to do work in natural resources, construction and maintenance occupations, in production, transportation, and material moving occupations. However, many of these jobs usually pay a minimum wage, or they pay the workers under the table. A 2017 study shows that the plasters and stucco masons are the jobs that are most likely to be held by immigrants. In Tennessee, construction workers are the most common type of job. Overall, 5% of undocumented immigrants make up the total of the U.S. workforce, while 82.9% are of native-born workers. These statistics show us no threat to immigrants taking American jobs. to learn that Roberto and Maria, even though they are undocumented, still pay for business permits and business insurance, and they pay taxes on their income as well. Many individuals feel strongly about the idea that undocumented immigrants are not paying taxes due to their status. The reality is that, although undocumented immigrants are unable to obtain a social security card, they are still able to pay taxes. In 1996, the IRS created an Individual Taxpayer Identification Number, otherwise known as the ITIN. This allows individuals who are not eligible to obtain a social security number to still pay and process their taxes. The Social Security Administration found that, while unauthorized immigrants worked and contributed as much as $13 billion in payroll taxes in 2010, only about $1 billion in benefit payments during 2010 were attributed to unauthorized work. 
the new American economy documents that undocumented immigrants are responsible for the pay of $30.6 billion in taxes in the year of 2019. It should be noted that undocumented immigrants do not qualify for most, if any, federal public benefits. This means that while undocumented immigrants pay into the system, they do not receive most, if any, government benefits, nor do they obtain social security funding. Alas, these individuals work to contribute to a society without seeking or obtaining any aid in return. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists. They beat us at the border. People are flowing through. Drugs are coming across, pouring across. We're going to have our borders nice and strong. We're going to build the wall. Gonna build the wall. Gonna build a wall. I'm going to build a wall, and Mexico's going to pay for it, right? Called Tremendous deficit. We have a trade deficit with Mexico. They'll pay for the wall. They'll be very happy about it. Believe me, I'll talk to them. This is going to be a wall. This isn't one of those deals where they jump over it. They go to Home Depot, buy a ladder, jump over the wall. This is a serious, this is a Trump wall. President Trump repeatedly degraded and over-objectified undocumented immigrants, especially Mexicans, by calling them criminals and rapists. In 2018, the federal conviction rate for undocumented immigrants was 782 per 100,000 undocumented immigrants, 535 per 100,000 lawful immigrants, and 1,422 per 1,000 natural-born Americans. This infograph shows that the total crime rates between 2012 and 2018. Blue is for the U.S. born citizens while green shows undocumented immigrants. Anna Flagg's study sh compares immigration rates to crime rates since the 1980s. It showed that as immigration increased, the crime rate decreased. Undocumented immigrants are more cautious and mindful of their environment as a result of their immigration status. These statistics shows that the clear majority of undocumented immigrants do not engage in criminal activity. There is little reason for them to do so given the threat of deportation to politically and economically insecure countries. Puerto Rico speaks perfect English. Time and time again, people are unaware that immigrants are much more than the Latino or Mexican stereotype. Undocumented immigrants come from various places other than Mexico and the South American region. While in fact, the majority of undocumented immigrants may come from Mexico, other South American countries are also included, such as El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, Venezuela, and many more. Much of this migration is due to the desperation of being liberated from overwhelming violence and poverty. Many people seek refugee rather than a new country to invade. A big population of undocumented immigrants who have very little recognition are those from Asian countries. In fact, Asian Americans are a massive contribution to undocumented immigrants most of the time. Of all immigrants to the U.S., 40% comes from Asia and out of 18 million Asian Americans in the country, 1.7 million are undocumented. Thus, undocumented immigrants isn't a Latino or a South American issue. No, not all undocumented immigrants look the same. Perhaps the most surprising fact is that much of the undocumented population can be contributed to overstate visas. A New York Times article from December of 2019 stated, Nearly half of the estimated 100 million undocumented immigrants now in the country did not trek through the desert or wait across the Rio Grande to enter the country. They flew in with a visa, passed inspection at the airport, and stayed. While there are countless individual stories of people who are undocumented and committed crimes, it is vital to understand that these events do not define a whole population. An American U.S. citizen committing a crime does not define the entire American population as criminal. Neither should only a few bad apples define the entire immigrant population. In the past, the Trump administration conveyed deep-rooted stereotypes that for many years defined the immigrant population and degraded undocumented immigrants. These stereotypes shadowed their hard work and overlooked their massive contribution to the American work environment and the economy. More than ever, it is important to recognize these stereotypes for what they are and inform others on the reality and the truth hidden behind these slurs. Even more so now, through the pandemic, when 69% of undocumented immigrants are frontline workers fighting COVID-19, once again with no benefits in return. Overall, we ask you to please think twice when commenting, sharing, or making jokes about negative stereotypes of undocumented immigrants. Many times, the decision to move was one taken for survival. Warsenshire once said, No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. <laughs>